and so you want to migrate your Git repositories from Azure DevOps to GitHub. This should be easy, right? But where to start? And how to preserve branches, tags, and even most importantly, the whole history? This opens a whole lot of problems, and we will try and solve them today. Spoiler alert, it is possible. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Coder Dave. Thank you very much for joining me today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video so you can support me and the channel. Don't worry if you're not overly familiar with Git and its command line, because I will try to be as clear as possible. And stay with me until the end, because I have a bonus content for you. Let's start. Problem. How to get the code from Azure DevOps. This is fairly easy to do. You just need to have the URL of the repository you want to move over to GitHub. The URL is in the format like you can see on screen, which is dev.azure.com forward slash the organization name you have, forward slash your project name, forward slash underscore git, and finally forward slash the name of your repository. To retrieve that, just go over here in the repository page, you have the clone button, and if you click on it, you can see the whole URL already composed for you. Now that we have the URL, we can clone the code. Problem. How to authenticate to the Azure DevOps Git repo? You could use the same credentials you use to authenticate in the Azure DevOps portal, but that would open for you a browser window in which you need to insert a username and password. If you have to migrate only one repo, then I guess this is fine. But if you want to perform a batch migration or if you want to insert your migration in a script so you can automate it, that of course is not doable. Another option is to generate Git credentials in Azure DevOps. And once again, you do it here in the Azure DevOps portal in the same window we used before for retrieving the URL. There's this generate Git credential button. Again, not very suitable if you want to automate your migration or if you want to perform a batch migration because you will need to reinsert that every time and also the credentials may change between different repos. The way I prefer doing it instead is with a PAT, a personal access token, which basically replace both username and password. To create a path, simply access your Azure DevOps portal and go to the icon over here with the user image next to your picture and click on personal access tokens. Here, you can create a new token and assign specific permissions to it. For the scope of Git repo migration, we just need the read permission under code over here. So now we are ready to get the code. Problem. How to clone a repository using a personal access token? Well, this is fairly easy. You just prepend the path to devazure.com in your URL like this. Notice that in this case, I'm using variables to make it more reusable, but I think you get the general meaning. You can use it just before your URL. Okay, now we have the code at least. Problem. How to clone all the rest, including branches, tags, history, etc. We could do it manually, but let's instead use the git command that does it for us. This is almost the same command we used before, with the exception of this dash dash mirror flag here. And what it does is cloning the repo in a special state called mirroring, uh, which copies every object in it. As you can see in here, this is the result of the command, and it looks pretty different than the original repo. All these files and directories represent objects in Git and not the actual files we have in our repositories. Cool, so now we have everything we need code, branch, tags, and all the other objects in the Git structure. Problem, how to link it to the new GitHub repository? The cloned repo now only has a reference to the source repository in Azure DevOps, which is called Origin. What we need to do is adding a new remote that points to the GitHub repository. And to do so, we need the GitHub URL. The GitHub URL is in the format like you can see on screen, which basically is github.com forward slash your username forward slash your repository dot git. And this is true for both public and private repositories. There's no difference among them. Next, we need to add this as a new remote. We can use the git remote add command. It needs a name for it. In my case, I decided to go with gh origin, but it can be anything you want. Remember that origin is already in use by the remote source repository. And we need to pass to it the GitHub URL we got before. Again, here I'm using variables to compose the URL, but you can pass it directly. Problem. How to push all these objects now to the target repo? As in a previous example, we could push tags, code, branches, etc., with different git commands. But once again, git has a command that comes in help. In fact, that dash dash mirror switch cannot only be applied to the git clone command as we have seen before, but that can be applied also to the git push as you can see here. If you have the GitHub credentials stored in your machine, 
or you want to insert that interactively, then you can use the first command over here and push them to the new origin, which in my case is this gh origin. If instead you want to do this more programmatically, or you don't want to save your credentials, you can use the second command here, which uses a personal access token. So once again, not only we have the dash dash mirror, but also the possibility to use the path. Problem, how to get a personal access token in GitHub? Go to the settings, which is under your profile here. You scroll down to developer settings, and finally, personal access tokens. Here you can generate a new path, or if you click on one, you can refresh it. For migration purposes, we need to assign it proper permissions. If your repository is public, then select just public repo here. If instead you want to push it to a private repository, then you will need the whole repo section over here. When you have your path, you can finally use it in the push command as we've seen before, just prepending it to the github.com part in the URL. All right, we are almost done, but one more thing, problem. And this is the last one, I promise. This process leaves the local repo in a kind of unusable state. That's right, because the git clone dash dash mirror, as we've seen, clones the repository in a kind of a raw format that git can understand, but that cannot be used as a working copy on the local machine. If you want to migrate the repository and use the local one as a working copy, I got you covered. And this is actually the bonus content I was talking about at the beginning of the video. I have created this GitHub repo, and you can find the link in the video description, which contains a few utilities to migrate your Azure DevOps repository to GitHub. Starting from the scripts folder over here, we have this migrate-mirror-ps1 script, which performs the migration as we've seen before. But we also have this migrate-ps1, which instead migrate the repository and leave it in an usable state. Instead of using the dash dash mirror, we clone first all the code. Then we clone all the remote branches, except for head and master that we already have. Then we add the new origin, as we've seen before, over here. After doing that, we push first all the code branches and tags with the dash dash all flag. And then we push the tags using the dash dash tags flag. Finally, we remove the source origin. And optionally, we rename the GitHub origin, which in my case was this GH origin, to just origin. And that's basically it. As we have seen, this clones your repository using the normal git commands. And as such, it leaves your local repo as a working copy already connected to your GitHub repository. In my GitHub repo, and you can find the link in the video description below, there are other implementation of the migration utility. For example, you can execute your migration inside a Docker container, or even run it using Azure container instances directly on the Azure infrastructure. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you very much for joining me today, and see you soon at Coder Dave.